Vanakam, Namaste, Namaskar. Welcome back to Jal Prayag again. I'm going to look at uh, one more basic topic. But before that, uh, I just wanted to uh, share uh, uh, something which uh, happened in the last couple of days. I've been getting some feedbacks from my colleagues and my students also. And uh, some of them I've already corrected. And one of uh, that uh, feedback was regarding the duration of the video. I know the last video was around 30 minutes. So I'll uh, try in future to cut down the duration so that we can keep it uh, somewhere around 15 to 20 minutes, which is very ideal uh, for you to sit down and have your attention on the topic. So in my effort, I'm going to reduce the duration in this uh, particular video also. And uh, I'm going to uh, talk about uh, one of the most basic features used in our navigation, which is uh, also called as boxing of compass. I know it is a pretty old uh, concept, which uh, slowly, if you can uh, realize that with the modern world, it is slowly going away. It's getting away from our bridge. But uh, still, it is being used in problems. Still, we report. So uh, this topic cannot get vanished away from our navigation. So it's still there. And uh, if you realize the same topic is also used in one of the concepts called wind triangle, which I might uh, later on make a video about. Questions which are posed in wind triangle, they also use the boxing of compass terms. So let's look at this boxing of compass. I just mentioned uh, Archkeeper, there's a lot of uh, reportings uh, he has to give to the bridge uh, team. And uh, one of the reportings is based on the direction of any target or object. So when you look at the direction, it is given in different ways. And uh, one of them is directly related to the compass. And if you see that these directions can be mentioned in terms of true as well as relative. Let me start with true today. And this true basically is directly related as a reference to true north, which is always considered zero for all your true readings, which is also shown in your compass rows in your chart. The concept of relative I'll be taking in uh, next series. Let me just put it as uh, this is part one. I'll uh, take that as part two. We have already defined what is uh, true course and true bearing in the last session. And uh, we saw that always the readings are taken from the true north. So similarly, in your uh, true compass boxing, we'll be still looking at true north as our zero reference. Now, what is the need for me to do this module is, when you look at your compass rows, all of you know that it is totally comprising of 360 degrees. And uh, various directions are given different names. And uh, they are even given in terms of points. I'll come to uh, what is a point also. And whenever a student is expected to remember uh, these names, I'm sure uh, the earlier sailors, they were supposed to remember them by heart. But anyway, that's slowly uh, fading away, as I said. So how do you remember them very easily? So just looking at the compass rows, I'm sure any cadet or any junior officer is not going to be very happy to remember or by heart all these things. So let us look at a very simple way of going uh, through step by step. So we'll start off with ones which are very simple. We all know. So uh, I'm going to start with them one by one. Before I start off, let me show you a picture of compass rows. And let us see what all we need to know in a compass rows. Okay. The first one is very obvious. The two directions which start from 000 to 359. 
and they are all true right now since it's a true boxing and you can see they are mentioned here in the outer dial the next thing which i am interested in is the names given for these directions these directions are given names which i have just marked a few of them which is uh, centered on the east and the third important feature on this compass rose is the numbering of the points so you can see a mark around 24 25 26 and 27 so these are the three uh, parts of the compass rose which will be useful for your boxing so with that let us start off how uh, we can make it very simple and easy to understand and uh, you will be able to do this even if you don't remember also i'm not asking you to by heart any of the points and their names all you have to do is if you forget just make a small diagram and you can figure it out let us start with the first one all of you know what is cardinal points there are four cardinal marks or the cardinal points and the angle between these cardinal marks are 90 degrees so that is what i have shown here they are 90 degrees apart and the most famous one is the north then east then south on the bottom and west so this is very easy to remember you will realize this cardinal points always have the highest priority in naming so that is why this is very simple to remember nobody can forget this so i will also use the same concept i'll will keep this as the highest priority which is always used in all our reportings also now within this four cardinal marks anyone who has uh, done uh, chart work questions or uh, the basic navigation questions you will really realize that the north and south has got more priority than east and west so i'll use that also so i'll keep that in mind and also will start naming them the next one what we have is intercardinal points so the moment i draw intercardinal points now what happens is the angle between each point becomes 45 degrees so now you can see the angle between two points becomes 45 degrees now how do you name them let me start from this right hand top corner you have the prime cardinal north then the next cardinal around it is east so it is very simply called northeast let us look at the southeast side this is the name also suggests so i call this southeast and i go on the left side bottom corner it is called southwest and then northwest you can see in the namings also i have given importance to north and south more than your east and west so this is how we finish off the intercardinals when i continue on the boxing you will realize that the first importance is given to the cardinal marks and then the second importance is given to the intercardinal marks that is what is the priority let us go to the next one now this is called half wind points why it is called half wind points you will realize that when i split them more now the angle between each point becomes 22.5 which has got a half so that is why it is called half wind points now i can draw one more set of that so now i have all these half wind points marked in the purple color let us see how to name them let's start from this right hand top itself you can see the closest cardinal is north and the closest intercardinal is northeast so i am going to call them north northeast let us come here the closest cardinal is east and the closest intercardinal is northeast so priority goes to cardinals so i am going to call it east northeast similarly let me come here always cardinal first then intercardinal so similarly i can mark on all the half wind points also you should realize till now it is very easy why because we have been using only the cardinals and intercardinals so till here there is not much of confusion anyone can do this part so the next step which i am going to do which is the fourth category 
we have already done cardinal points, intercardinal, and half end points. The fourth category is the one which is slightly confusing to the students. So let us look at that uh, last set of uh, angles. Now, uh, you should realize I've been dividing regularly by halves. So from 90, it was 45. 45 half is 22.5. So 22.5 half, that is what is my final duration or the angle between the two points. So obviously, I have an answer called 11.25 degrees. So do you realize this 0.25 is a quarter? That is why it is also called as quarter wind points. Now these quarter wind points, if you realize I've uh, marked it as four alpha, and I'm going to show you four bravo also. So why alpha? Because the first quarter wind points, I'm going to reference with cardinal marks. And then I'm going to reference with intercardinal marks. So let us finish off the cardinal marks. Let me start with the north. You can see I can do two sets of quarter wind points. And right now, this angle between them will be 11.25. So how do I name it? Pretty simple. Let me start with the north. So north is the highest priority. And you can see this quarter wind point is towards east. So that is why it is called north by east. Let us look at the left-hand side of the north. It is going to be north by west. Now, we'll go to the east and the west. I'm standing in the east. So this has got the next priority. And you can see east is the closest cardinal. And this quarter wind point is north from the eastern side. So that means I'll call it east by north. Similarly, this next quarter wind point is on the southern side of the east. So I'll call it east by south. Now let me go to the southern side. It's very, very simple. The highest priority is the south. So right now, south by east, south by west. Similarly, west by south and west by north. You can see I have taken always the cardinals as the first priority and then marked the rest of them. Now I've finished the four alpha. Similarly, same principle I will apply on the one more or the final set of your quarter wind points where I'm going to use intercardinals as reference. The previous slide, it was cardinals as reference. So I have marked it for Bravo. Please look at this. These are the last set of quarter wind points. Again, for me, the closest one is your Northeast with this your cardinal mark. And you can see this quarter wind point is towards the North. So I will call this Northeast by North. You'll see in some of the books, this will be marked um, instead of by, you will see a multiplication symbol or Northeast into North. So that is what is called by, you can see a multiplication symbol. So it represents by. Now let us look at this. This is Northeast by East. Let us come to Southeast now. You can see again, one is towards the east and another one is towards the south. So southeast by east and southeast by south. Similarly here, southeast, sorry, I'm sorry, southwest by south and southwest by west. And the last set is northwest by west and northwest by north. So this completes the full set of our boxing. And you will realize that if I put all of them in a single picture, now you have everything with you. The red ones marked with cardinal, the greens marked as intercardinal, purple, which is your half wind points, and the orange, which is your quarter wind points. So you have completed the boxing. Now, uh, I'll show you a couple of pictures of the boxing with these names. And then I'll give you a conclusion. Let us see how to conclude this whole topic. We'll always start with the simplest ones first. And obviously the cardinals were the simplest and they had the highest priority. Within the cardinals, I told you north and south get the edge over the east and west. And then comes your intercardinals. Your cardinals and intercardinals govern the rest of the directions. So you will see that they are on priority. 
and uh, the names also starts with them either the cardinal or intercardinals half wind points are marked it and then finally comes the quarter wind points the list is big so i have not mentioned it so totally there are 32 points and you will realize that in each quadrant you'll have eight points and when you divide 360 by 32 it comes to 11.25. So that is what is one point of a compass direction. So uh, that is the uh, one of the simplest ways to uh, put in your own boxing. So I feel that you don't have to by heart or try to uh, keep remembering something. It is very easy. If you forget also, you can just make your own boxing. I'll show you this picture once again. So we saw what were the degree values, what was the namings, and what is the number of points. You can see there are totally 32 points. I'm going to show you uh, just one last slide, which again gives you all this without any angles. So these are the same things. I hope uh, this video was uh, small enough and uh, informative for the beginners, basically the cadets, the BSc uh, candidates or the DS, uh, DNS candidates. It will help you even in your second mate's exam when you are uh, trying to solve any problem where uh, the directions are given by boxing of compass, so instead of giving you the values. So uh, that's the end of this uh, small session. I hope you uh, liked it and I'll catch you soon for the next uh, series on this. Maybe I'll make uh, do part two. So till then, uh, namaste.